When was the computer chip developed? The computer chip, or integrated circuit, was developed in the late 1950s by two researchers who were working independently of each other, Jack Kilby, 1923, of Texas Instruments, who developed his chip in 1958, and by Robert Noyce, 1927-1990, of Fairchild Semiconductor, in 1959. The chip is an electronic device made of a very small piece. Usually less than one quarter inch square, of silicon wafer, and today has typically hundreds of thousands miniature transistors and other circuit components that are interconnected. Since its development in the late 1950s, the number of tiny components a chip can have has steadily risen. Improving computer performance, since the chips perform a computer's control, logic, and memory functions. A computer's microprocessor is a single chip that holds all of the computer's logic and arithmetic. It is responsible for interpreting and executing instructions given by a computer program, software. The microprocessor can be thought of as the brain of the computer's operating system. Many other consumer electronic devices rely on the computer chip as well. Including the microwave, the VCR, and calculators. What is an infidel? Derived from the Latin infidelis, meaning unbelieving or unfaithful. The term was used by the Catholic Church during the Middle Ages, 500-1350, to describe a threat posed by Muslims. As the Moors. Muslims from North Africa, moved into Spain early in the 8th century and the Seljuk Turks conquered much of Asia Minor during the 11th century, medieval Christians. Of which there were a growing number, became increasingly fearful of growing Muslim influence. Not only were people of the Islamic faith occupying lands that were formerly Christian. They soon prevented Christian pilgrims from entering their holy land in the Middle East. The church responded to the so-called infidels by inspiring Western Europeans to take up arms in the Crusades, which began in 1095 and ended unsuccessfully in 1291. In another effort to drive back Muslim expansion, in 1231 Pope Gregory IX, c. 1170-1241, issued a papal bull creating the Inquisition. The system by which heretics were discovered and punished. Many of them were burned at the stake. The Moorish dominance of the Iberian Peninsula, present-day Spain and Portugal. Lasted hundreds of years before the North Africans were driven out by armies of the Christian states. Thereafter, during the reign of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, Spain embarked on a period of profound suspicion. It conducted the Spanish Inquisition, by which anyone thought to be an infidel. The definition now broadened to include Jews, was discovered and punished. What was the detente?
Détente is a relaxation of strained relations, particularly between nations. The détente of the Cold War era began after Premier Nikita Khrushchev. 1894-1971, rose to power in the Soviet Union in 1958 and initiated a plan of peaceful coexistence with the West. During the 1960s the United States and the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, USSR, entered a phase of improved relations, which saw the signing of the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty, 1968. The Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty, known as the SALT-1 Treaty, 1972, and the Helsinki Accords. 1975, which pledged increased cooperation between the nations of Eastern and Western Europe. Some historians refer to the detente as the end of the Cold War, while others view it as an intermission. When the Soviet Union under Premier Leonid Brezhnev, 1906-1982, invaded neighboring Afghanistan in 1979 to put down an anti-communist movement there, tensions between the two superpowers, the US and the USSR, heightened dramatically. Further, Brezhnev had been steadily building up Soviet arms during his tenure. These events brought an end to the détente. Collective control of the communist government the first five-year plan began in 1928, and subsequent plans were carried out until 1958, at which time the new Soviet leadership developed a seven-year plan. 1959 to 65, aimed at matching and surpassing American industry. Under Premier Leonid Brezhnev, 1906 to 1982. The five year plans were reinstated in 1966 and continued until the dissolution of the Soviet Union during 1990 and 1991. Other communist countries also instituted five year plans, all with the goal of bringing industry, agriculture, and the distribution of goods and services under government control. How did the civil rights movement begin? It began on Thursday, December 1, 1955, as Rosa Parks, 1913. A seamstress who worked for a downtown department store in Montgomery, Alabama, made her way home on the Cleveland Avenue bus. Parks was seated in the first row that was designated for blacks. But the white rows in the front of the bus soon filled up. When Parks was asked to give up her seat so that a white man could sit. She refused. She was arrested and sent to jail. Montgomery's black leaders had already been discussing staging a protest against racial segregation on the city buses. They soon organized, with Baptist minister Martin Luther King Jr. 1929-1968, as their leader. Beginning on December 5, 1955, thousands of black people refused to ride the city buses, the Montgomery bus boycott had begun. It lasted more than a year 382 days and ended only when the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that segregation on the buses was unconstitutional. The protesters and civil rights activists had emerged the victors in this there. 
first and momentous effort to end segregation and discrimination in the United States. Parks, who lost her job as a result of the arrest. Later explained that she had acted on her own beliefs that she was being unfairly treated. But in so doing Parks had taken a stand and had given rise to a movement. Who was Cabeza de Vaca? Alvar Nunez Cabeza de Vaca, c. 1490 c. 1560, was a Spanish explorer who in 1527 joined an expedition to the New World. And because of his reports that he believed the area north of Mexico might be rich in precious metals. Other Spanish explorers were later inspired to explore the region. After landing in Florida in 1527, Cabeza de Vaca and a few others, including the black explorer Estevanico, became separated from the ships. The men built a barge and sailed across the Gulf of Mexico from northern Florida to the islands off the Texas coast, where their ship was wrecked. In 1528 Cabeza de Vaca was imprisoned by the Indians there. He escaped by 1530 and set out on foot through northern Mexico, exploring the region for some five years. Proceeding south, in 1536 Cabeza de Vaca reached Mexico City. Which was then the capital of Spain's North American holdings. He returned to Spain the following year. In 1541 the explorer led an expedition to the Rio de la Plata region, of southern South America. And reached Asuncion, in present-day Paraguay. In 1542, Cabeza de Vaca was appointed the Spanish colonial governor of Paraguay, a position he held for two years. He proved to be an inept leader, was deposed by the colonists, and returned to Spain. There he was banished to service in Africa. Why did some observers draw comparisons between the war in Iraq and the Vietnam War? Critics of the U.S.-led war in Iraq found several similarities to American military involvement in Vietnam. Both conflicts seemed to many people to be without ample cause. Critics of the U.S.-led invasion of Iraq charged that there was no compelling reason for Americans to go to war in the Middle Eastern nation. They called the operation hawkish, saying it was an unwarranted expansion of the war on terror. These arguments were strengthened when no weapons of mass destruction were found in Iraq. Media images of protests against the invasion of Iraq Hark and back to the anti-war demonstrations of the Vietnam era. And, like Vietnam, there seemed to be no clear exit strategy for the U.S. Military from Iraq these were extended operations, or wars without end. Some observers also drew comparisons between Vietnam's My Lai massacre and the Abu Ghraib prison scandal in Iraq. They pointed to military spokespersons who categorized the atrocities as isolated events. Unrepresentative of American military policy. 
the Bush administration stood by the decision to enter Iraq, ousting and capturing Saddam Hussein, 1937. Saying it was a rogue state led by a despotic ruler who had the capability of aiding terrorist groups. The controversy over Iraq continued long after President George W. Bush, 1946, declared the end to major combat operations, as the casualty count climbed the result of continued coalition fighting against pockets of resistance and attacks on U.S. installments in the unstable nation. In 2005, as U.S. officials slowly handed over security to Iraqi forces. There was not yet a timetable for U.S. withdrawal. But the newly elected interim president, Kurdish leader Jalil Talabani, vowed that his government would work to provide security so that U.S. led coalition forces could return home. What is the strongest earthquake ever measured? It was one that shook Chile on May 22, 1960, it measured 9.5 on the Richter scale. 2,000 died, 3,000 were injured, and 2 million were left homeless. Damage was $550 million. The quake also spawned tsunamis, seismic waves, which claimed 61 lives in Hawaii, 138 in Japan, and 32 dead or missing in the Philippines. What is Proust's claim to literary fame? Marcel Proust, 1871-1922, is generally considered the greatest French novelist of the 20th century and is credited with introducing to fiction the elements of psychological analysis, innovative treatment of time, and multiple themes. Proust is primarily known for his multi-volume work A La Recherche du Temps Perdu. 1954, which was published in English as Remembrance of Things. Past. Proust was a creative stylist as well as shrewd social observer. In the mid-1890s Proust joined other prominent artists, including the great French novelist of the 19th century. Émile Zola, 1840-1902, to form the protest group known as the Revisionists or Dreyfusards. The artists were staunch supporters of Alfred Dreyfus, 1859-1935, and therefore vocal critics of the French military, who they accused of anti-Semitism for keeping the French army officer. Wrongly accused of treason, imprisoned on Devil's Island. Why did the United States get involved in Vietnam? The policy of involvement in the Vietnam conflict began in the mid-1950s when President Harry S. Truman, 1884 to 1972, provided US support to the French in their struggle to retain control of Vietnam which was then part of French Indochina. In the Cold War era, 1947-89, government leaders believed that the United 
states must come to the assistance of any country threatened by communism. Truman's successors in the White House, Presidents Dwight D. Eisenhower, 1890-1969 John F. Kennedy, 1917-1963, and Lyndon B. Johnson, 1908-1973, also followed this school of thought. Fearing a domino effect among neighboring nations if one fell, they'd all fall. What did Alfred Nobel do? The Swedish chemist whose name is known around the world because of the Nobel Prize. Invented dynamite, 1866. Even though dynamite improved the safety of explosives, Alfred Nobel. 1833 to 1896, became concerned with how his invention would be used. Nobel was a pacifist, he was involved in the explosives industry because it was his family's business. In his will, he set up a fund, bequeathing a sum of $9.2 million. To reward people who make strides in the sciences, literature, and promoting international peace. He died in 1896, and the Nobel Prize has been awarded annually. Except for 1940-42, since 1901. Recipients in any of five categories physics, chemistry, medicine-slash-physiology, literature, and peace are presented with a gold medal, a diploma, and a substantial monetary award. In the hundreds of thousands of US dollars for each laureate, a sixth related award is the prize. In Economic Sciences in Memory of Alfred Nobel, which was established in 1968 by the Swedish National Bank and was first awarded in 1969. The laureates are announced each year in October. And the prizes are handed out in ceremonies on December 10th, the anniversary of Nobel's death. What caused the nuclear accident at Chernobyl? The April 1986 accident the world's worst nuclear power plant disaster was caused by explosions at the Soviet power plant. Sending radioactive clouds across much of northern Europe. According to the World Nuclear Association, the accident was the result of a flawed reactor design. That was operated with inadequately trained personnel and without proper regard for safety. The trouble began at 1.24 a.m. on Saturday, April 26, when Unit 4 of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant about 70 miles outside of the Ukrainian capital of Kiev, was rocked by two enormous explosions. The roof was blown off the plant and radioactive gases and materials were sent more than a half mile into the atmosphere. Though two workers were killed instantly, there was no official announcement about the hazardous blast. It was the Swedes who detected a dramatic increase in windborne radiation. And on April 28 two full days after the accident news of the event was briefly reported by the Soviet news agency TASS. Two weeks later, on May 14, First Secretary Mikhail Gorbachev, 1931 
went on national television and explained what officials knew about the accident. More details were revealed over the following months. The explosions were caused by an unauthorized test carried out by plant operators who were trying to determine what would happen in the event of a power outage. There were six critical errors made by workers during the testing, which combined to spell disaster. Perhaps the most significant of these mistakes was turning off the emergency coolant system. Once the test was underway, further mistakes caused the core to heat to more than 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Producing molten metal that reacted with what cooling. Water was left to produce hydrogen gas and steam, resulting in a powerful explosion. What caused the second explosion is not clear, and experts disagree on what might have happened. Some theorize that it was a pure nuclear reaction. When was the Red Cross founded? The Red Cross was founded in Switzerland in October 1863 when the delegates from 16 nations met in Geneva to discuss establishing in all civilized countries permanent societies of volunteers who in time of war would give help to the wounded without regard for nationality. The idea had been described in a pamphlet published in 1862 by Swiss philanthropist Jean Henry Dunat, 1828-1910. In 1859 Dunat was in Italy when French and Italian troops under Napoleon III fought. Austrians under Emperor Francis Joseph in an indecisive battle in Lombardy, northern Italy. At Solferino, Dunat observed the suffering of the wounded and immediately organized a group of volunteers to help them. At the Geneva Conference in 1863, the delegates decided the organization's symbol and name. The name of the organization comes from its flag showing a red cross on a white. Background the inverse of the flag of Switzerland, where the organization was founded. The following August, 1864, European delegates met again. This time they were joined by two American observers. The meeting gave rise to the first Geneva Convention, which determined the protection of sick and wounded soldiers and of medical personnel and facilities during wartime. The Red Cross was adopted as a symbol for neutral aid. In Muslim countries the organization is known as the Red Crescent. What was the first scientific textbook on human anatomy? It is a work titled On the Structure of the Human Body, written by Belgian physician and professor Andreas V. E. S. Aleus. 1514-1564, and published in 1543, when he was in his late twenties. Like other anatomists during the Renaissance, 1350-1600, V.E.S. Aleus conducted numerous dissections of human cadavers. Publishing his findings and drawings, his textbook soon became the authoritative reference. 
overturning the works of Greek physician Galen, 129 c. 199. When was the first kindergarten? The world's first kindergarten opened in 1837 in Blankenburg, Germany. Under the direction of educator Friedrich Froebel, 1782-1852. Froebel went on to establish a training course for kindergarten teachers. And he introduced the schools throughout Germany. Such schools and classes for children ages 4 to 6 are the norm today in much of the world. What does the Security Council do? According to the UN Charter, the functions and powers of the Security Council are to maintain international peace and security in accordance with the principles and purposes of the United Nations, to investigate any dispute or situation which might lead to international friction, to recommend methods of adjusting such disputes or the terms of settlement, to formulate plans for the establishment of a system to regulate armaments. To determine the existence of a threat to the peace or act of aggression and to recommend what action should be taken, to call on members to apply economic sanctions and other measures. Not involving the use of force to prevent or stop aggression, to take military action against an aggressor. To recommend the admission of new members, to exercise the trusteeship functions of the United Nations in strategic areas. And to recommend to the General Assembly the appointment of the Secretary General and. Together with the Assembly, to elect the judges of the International Court of Justice. Why was James Joyce's Ulysses banned in the United States? Irish writer James Joyce's, 1882-1941, masterpiece was originally published in 1922, it had been serialized prior to then. By the Paris bookstore Shakespeare and Company. By 1928 it was officially listed as obscene by the U.S. Customs Court. The reason was twofold. The use of four-letter words and the stream-of-consciousness narrative of one of the characters. Revealing her innermost thoughts. When the official stance on the book was challenged in U.S. Court in 1933, the judge. John Woolsey, called it a sincere and honest book. And after long reflection he ruled that it be openly admitted into the United States. Random House, the American publisher who had advocated the obscenity charge be challenged in court. Promptly began typesetting the work in order to release a U.S. edition. But the court decision had important and lasting legal impact as well, it was a turning point in reducing government censorship. Prior to the case, laws that prohibited obscenity were not seen to be in conflict with the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which is most often interpreted as a guarantee of freedom of speech. And the U.S. Post Office and the Customs Service alike both had the power to determine obscenity. 
the government appealed the decision to the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. But Judge Wolsey's decision held. What innovations are credited to Virgil? Scholars acclaim Virgil, 70-19b. C. For transforming the Greek literary traditions. Which had long provided Roman writers with material, themes, and styles. Virgil populated his pastoral settings, always idealized by other writers. With contemporary figures, he combined observation with inquiry. Employed a more complex syntax than had been in use previously, and developed realistic characters. These technical innovations informed all subsequent literature. However, writing was not supposed to have been Virgil's occupation, in his youth. He studied rhetoric and philosophy, and he planned to practice law, but proved too shy for public speaking. So he returned to the small family farm his mother and father operated, where he studied and wrote poetry. In addition to the Aeneid, Virgil wrote Eclogues, or Bucolica, a set of ten pastoral poems written. From 42 to 37 BC, as a response to the confiscation of his family's lands. And Georgics, a four-volume work, written from 36 to 29 BC, glorifying the Italian countryside. Within 50 years of his death in 19 BC, Virgil's poems became part of the standard curriculum in Roman schools, ensuring the production of numerous copies. Virgil's works have remained accessible to scholars and students ever since. Why does the Leaning Tower of Pisa lean? The famous bell tower in Pisa, in northwestern Italy. Leans because of the unstable soil on which it was built. Construction began in 1173 on the approximately 180-foot Campanile. It began to lean as soon as the first three floors were completed. Nevertheless, building continued, and the seven-story structure was finished between 1360 and 1370. Leaning a bit more each year, by the time it was closed for repairs in 1990. The tower tilted 14.5 feet out of line when measured from the top story. Engineers on the project worked to stabilize the foundation and straighten it slightly, to prevent damage. The tower, which was built alongside a church and a baptistery, would probably not be remarkable if it were not for its slant. But with its characteristic angle, it continues to attract tourists to the small town on the Arno River. How did the House of Windsor originate? The origins of Windsor, the family name of the Royal House of Great Britain, can be traced to the 1840 marriage of Queen Victoria, who ruled from 1837 to 1901, to her first cousin Albert. 
the son of the Duke of Saxe Coburg Gotha, in present day Germany. As a foreigner, Prince Albert had to overcome the distrust of the British public, which he did by proving himself to be a devoted husband to Queen Victoria and by demonstrating his genuine concern in Britain's national affairs. Victoria and Albert had nine children. Their oldest son, Albert Edward, 1841-1910, became King Edward VII upon Victoria's death in 1901. But Edward's reign lasted only until 1910, when he died and his son, George V, 1865-1936, ascended the throne. George was king during World War I, 1914-18, and, in 1917, with Britain and Germany bitter enemies. He denounced his ties and claims to Germany, superseding his grandfathers. Prince Albert's, family name of Wedden and establishing the House of Windsor. What was the Tariff of Abominations? In 1828 the U.S. Congress passed a bill putting high tariffs, government taxes, on imported goods. The measure was intended to protect the burgeoning industries of New England where numerous factories had opened during the first three decades of the century and the manufacture of finished goods defined the region's economy. Congress figured that by placing high taxes on goods from other countries, Americans would buy American-made products. But southern farmers had come to rely on cheaper imported goods. Believing the 1828 legislation was overly protective of the nation's industrial interests. Southerners dubbed it the Tariff of Abominations. Vice President John C. Calhoun 1782 1850, from South Carolina, openly and strongly criticized the tax pronouncing that any state could declare null a federal law it deemed unconstitutional. In response, Congress took measures to lower the tariffs, but not eliminate them. South Carolina remained dissatisfied with the legislation. And in 1832 the state declared the Tariff Act null and void. Further, it threatened secession from the Union. President Andrew Jackson, 1767-1845, unwilling to tolerate such rebelliousness, and determined to enforce the federal law at all costs, asked Congress to pass the force bill legislation allowing the nation's armed forces to collect the tariffs. Jackson's move inspired tremendous opposition in Congress. The Senate leader of the anti-Jackson contingency was Henry Clay, 1777-1852, of Kentucky. Clay, who had earned himself the nickname Great Pacificator for his work in crafting the Missouri Compromise. 1820 presented another compromise in 1833. He proposed that duties on certain goods could remain high but others should be gradually reduced over time. The compromise tariff authored by Clay averted an all-out conflict in the nation. The measure was passed and thereafter tariffs were 
adjusted depending on the prevailing economic conditions. But the fury over the tariff of abominations further revealed the North-South differences and the federal government versus states' rights issues that would inspire the southern states led by South Carolina to secede from the Union in 1860 and 1861, bringing on the American Civil War, 1861-65. How old is Buddhism? One of the great Asian religions, Buddhism dates back to ancient times. It was founded in India in the 6th and 5th centuries B. C. by Siddhartha Gautama. C 563 C 483 BC, who became known as Buddha, or Enlightened One. Born in what is today Nepal, Siddhartha's father is described in stories as a king or a warrior prince, and the family lived in luxury. When he was 29 years old, Siddhartha had a series of four visions that prompted him to leave his wife, young son, and the palace and venture out in search of spiritual enlightenment and truth. He wandered for six years, traveling to the ancient kingdom of Magadha, in present-day India. During this time he led a life of extreme austerity and even self-torture. He finally decided that his ascetic life would not lead him to truth. And he abandoned his practice of self-denial. One day, when he was 35 years old, Siddhartha went to meditate under a banyan, shade, tree, also called a bodhi tree. There he claimed to achieve enlightenment. Thereafter, Buddha traveled through the Ganges River Valley, teaching meditation and adherence to moral conduct as the way to enlightenment. He established a community of monks to continue his work. Buddhism is the world's fourth largest religion, after Christianity, Islam, and Hinduism. Most of the estimated 360 million Buddhists in the world today live in Asia. Sri Lanka, Southeast Asia, and Japan, predominantly. What were the seven cities of Cibola? The reference is to an area in present-day northern New Mexico that was thought by early Spanish explorers to contain vast treasures. One expedition in search of these legendary golden cities was that led by Francisco Vasquez de Coronado, c. 1510-1554, who sought to claim the riches for Spain. In 1540 he set out from North Galicia, a province northwest of Mexico City. With some 300 Spanish troops as well as some Indians. They made it into the region where Arizona and New Mexico lie today. There they encountered Zuni Indian settlements and believed these to be Cibola. The Spaniards captured the Zuni who were the descendants of the Anasazi cliff dwellers that had settled the southwest as early as 10,000 BC. The Spaniards found no gold at the Zuni settlement. Separate expeditions set out, still hoping to locate riches in the area. 
They did not find any precious metals, but they did make some discoveries. They were the first Europeans to see the Grand Canyon, to travel up the Rio Grande Valley. And to encounter several native peoples living in the region. In 1546 Coronado was accused of cruelty in his treatment of these peoples. When did the anti-slavery movement begin? In the United States, the campaign to prohibit slavery strengthened in the early 1800s. Across the Atlantic, abolitionists had successfully lobbied for the outlaw of Slave trade in Great Britain by 1807. The following year, the U.S. government also outlawed the trade, but possession of slaves remained legal and profitable. In the 1830s, the call to abolish slavery and emancipate slaves became an active movement in the United States. Precipitated by a revival of evangelical religion in the North, Abolitionists, believing slavery is morally wrong and violates Christian beliefs, called for an end to the system, which had become critical to the agrarian economy of the southern states, where plantations produced cotton, tobacco, and other crops for domestic and international markets. Why is Henry VIII so famous? The reign of Henry VIII, from 1509 to 1547, is perhaps the most well-known Tudor monarchy. It was marked by papal conflicts and England's subsequent break with the Roman Catholic Church. When Henry's wife, Catherine of Aragon, 1485-1536, failed to produce a male heir, he appealed to the Pope to grant him a divorce. The request was of course denied. Though Henry went on to have his marriage to Catherine declared invalid, on the grounds that she was his brother's widow, and he secretly married Anne Boleyn, C. 1507 to 1536. In 1533, his troubles with the church continued. In 1534, he set up the Church of England, declaring the monarch as its head. He went to extreme measures to ensure the act was upheld, even executing his appointed chancellor, Sir Thomas More. 1478 to 1535, for his refusal to acknowledge royal supremacy. Henry VIII was eventually successful in procuring a male heir to the throne, but it required a third marriage to Jane Seymour, c. 1509 to 1537, his son, Edward VI, 1537 to 53 succeeded him in 1547. Nevertheless, it was Henry VIII's daughters who went on to make history. Mary I, who ruled England and Ireland from 1553 to 1558, was the daughter of Henry and his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. In 1554 Mary wed Spain's Philip II, 1527-1598, forming a temporary alliance between the two powers. The following year she realigned England with the Catholic Church, undertaking the persecution of Protestants and earning herself the name Bloody Mary.
What was Operation Falcon? It was the code name for the mid-April 2005 roundup of more than 10,000 fugitives in one week. The coordinated nationwide effort was led by the U.S. Marshals Service. Together with officers from 960 federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies. The marshals arrested 10,340 people who were wanted for various crimes, many of them violent. The operation took place during Crime Victims' Rights Week. More than 150 of the fugitives were wanted for murder. 550 for sexual assault charges, and more than 600 for armed robberies. There were also escaped prisoners and criminal suspects among those arrested. Operation Falcon was a landmark in law enforcement because of the sheer number of arrests. Previous coordinated efforts had nabbed only hundreds of fugitives. How old are Aesop's fables? They date back to the 6th century B. C. However, it was not until the late 1600s that English language versions appeared. In 1692 a complete translation of the stories, which are believed to have been written by a Greek slave, were published in London by Sir Roger Ellis Strange, 1616-1704. The short, moralistic tales, which were handed down through the oral tradition, include the well known story of the tortoise and the hare, which teaches the lesson slow and steady wins the race, and the one about a wolf in sheep's clothing people are not always what they seem. Since some of the timeless fables have been traced to earlier literature, Many believe it is almost certain that Aesop is a legendary figure. What was the reign of terror? It refers to the short but bloody period in French history that began in 1793 and ended July. 1794 During this time revolutionary leader Maximilien Robespierre, 1758-1794, led a tribunal that arrested, tried, and put to death more than 17,000 people most of them by guillotine. In the reforms that followed the 1789 oath of the tennis court and the capture of the Bastille, France was transformed into a constitutional state, and French subjects became French citizens. An elected legislature, the Constituent Assembly, was given control of the government. Robespierre was elected first deputy from Paris and was the leader of the Radical Popular Party. In this new era, those who had been associated with the old regime or those who opposed the French Revolution became the subjects of persecution. In January 1793 King Louis XVI, 1754-1793, and his wife, Marie Antoinette, 1755-1793, were executed, beginning the reign of terror that saw thousands more 
mostly those who had made up the powerful first and second estates, suffer a similar fate at the hands of the revolutionaries. To escape certain death, many fled the country, this included top-ranking military officials. Which made room for the rapid advancement of young military officers such as Napoleon Bonaparte, 1769-1821. The reign of terror ended on July 28, 1794, when Robespierre himself was put to death. As he gained power and influence, the revolutionary leader also had become increasingly paranoid. Even putting two of his friends to death in 1794, he was overthrown. On July 27 by the revolution of 9th Thermidor and the next day died by guillotine. When did higher education begin? About the 6th century B. C. Schools of medicine existed on the island of Kos, Greece. Where philosophers theorized on the nature of man and the universe. The Pythagoreans, followers of Greek philosopher and mathematician Pythagoras, c. 580-500 BC, began the first schools of higher education in southern Italy where philosophy and mathematics were taught in Greek. The great philosophers Socrates, Plato and Aristotle carried on the Pythagorean tradition as did Epicurus and Zeno in the 4th century BC universities have a long history in the Arab world, for example. The Al-Azhar University in Cairo was founded in about AD 970 and is one of the oldest universities in the world. What were the effects of the Dust Bowl? After the dust had settled in the spring of 1934, the reaction among many great Plains Farm families was to flee the devastation. More than 350,000 people packed up their belongings and headed west, their lives forever changed by the disaster. In his 1939 novel, The Grapes of Wrath, American writer and Nobel laureate John Steinbeck. 1902-1968, chronicled the harrowing and sorrowful westward journey of one Oklahoma family that was among the so-called Okies who deserted their farmlands. In the devastated area of the Great Plains in search of a better life elsewhere, Nature alone was not to blame for the Dust Bowl, by the end of the 19th century, farmers. Aided by the advent of large tractors and reapers, harvesting machines, were cultivating the Great Plains. Uprooting the native buffalo grass, which holds moisture in the soil, keeping it from blowing away. Even strong winds and extended droughts had not disturbed the land when it was covered by the grassland. When the demand for wheat increased after World War I, 1914-18, farmers responded by planting more than 27 million new acres of the grain. By 1930 there were almost three times as many acres in wheat production as ten years earlier. Most of the buffalo grass that had prevented the earth from blowing had been removed. When the next dry period came, in spring 1934, and the wind picked up, the dust bowl resulted. 
the government stepped in to remedy the problem, soil conservation became the focus of federal agencies. And the U.S. Forest Service undertook a project to plant a shelter belt of trees within a 100-mile wide zone, from Canada to the Texas Panhandle. Recovery was aided by the return of the rains. Soon the buffalo grass had grown back, helping to ensure that the dust bowl would not recur. Who was Generalissimo Franco? Generalissimo Francisco Franco 1892-1975, was the fascist leader of Spain from 1939 until 1973. He rose to power in the Spanish Civil War. 1936-39, as he led a rebel nationalist army against the loyalist forces. Capturing Madrid in 1939, Franco assumed the role of head of government. Though he and the nationalists had received considerable help from Nazi Germany and fascist Italy to win the civil war, when fighting broke out in World War II. 1939-45, Spain stayed neutral, at least nominally so. In 1947, with the fighting in Europe over. Franco declared himself monarch of Spain and ruled as an authoritative dictator. Two years before he died, he stepped down as head of state. Though he retained the title Generalissimo, meaning commander-in-chief. Franco named as his successor Prince Juan Carlos, 1938. When Franco died in 1975, Juan Carlos I became the first Spanish monarch to control Spain since his grandfather. King Alfonso XIII, 1886-1941, was deposed in 1931 to make way for the brief republic. Which was later overthrown by Franco and the nationalists. King Juan Carlos played an important role in transforming Spain into a modern democracy. How were the Puritans different from the Pilgrims? The Puritans who founded Massachusetts Bay Colony were, like the Pilgrims, religious Protestants, both sects protested the Anglican Church. But while the Pilgrims separated from the Church, the Puritans wished to purify it. Their religious movement began in England during the 1500s and they were influenced by the teachings of reformer John Calvin, 1509-1564. They also had strong feelings about government, maintaining that people can only be governed by contract, such as a constitution, which limits the power of a ruler. When King James I, 1566-1625, ascended the throne of England in 1603, he was the first ruler of the house, royal family, of Stuart. The Stuart monarchs, particularly James's successor, King Charles I, 1600-1649, tried to enforce absolute adherence to the High Church of Anglicanism and viewed the Puritan agitators as a threat to the authority of the crown. Persecuted by the throne, 
groups of Puritans fled England for the New World. One group was granted a corporate charter for the Massachusetts Bay Company, 1629. Unlike other such contracts, which provided the framework for establishing colonies in America. This one did not require the stockholders to hold their meetings in England. Stockholders who made the voyage across the Atlantic would become voting citizens in their own settlement. The board of directors would form the legislative assembly. And the company president, Puritan leader John Winthrop, 1588-1649, would become the governor. In 1630 they settled in what is today Boston and Salem, Massachusetts, establishing a Puritan commonwealth. By 1643 more than 20,000 Puritans arrived in Massachusetts, in what is called the Great Migration. Puritans also settled in Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Virginia during the colonial period. What caused the East-West Schism in the Catholic Church? During the Middle Ages, 5001350 cultural, geographical, and even political differences caused an increasingly wide divide between East, the Catholic churches in Eastern and Southeastern Europe, as well as in parts of Western Asia, and West, the Catholic churches of Western Europe. In the 800s a series of theological disputes began between the highest authority of the Eastern, Byzantine churches, called the Patriarch of Constantinople, also called the Ecumenical Patriarch, and the Pope particularly about the Pope's authority over Christians in the East. Finally, in 1054, Pope Leo IX. 1002-1054, issued an anathema, a formal curse, against the Patriarch of Constantinople, Michael Cerularius, c. 1000-1059, excommunicating him and his followers from the Roman Catholic Church. The Church had officially split. Thereafter the Eastern Orthodox Churches would accept the Patriarch of Constantinople as the highest church authority, in other words, they did not acknowledge the primacy of the Pope. And they would follow the Byzantine rite, ceremonies, in the West. Roman Catholics followed the Latin rite and continued to regard the Pope as the Holy Father. When the Ottoman Empire captured Constantinople, present day Istanbul, Turkey, in 1453, Orthodox Christians in the East came under Muslim rule, this lasted into the 1800s. Though there are still differences between the Eastern Orthodox Churches, the Greek Orthodox Church, the Russian Orthodox Church, etc., and the Roman Catholic Church today, the rift between them was healed in 1964 when Pope Paul VI. 1897 to 1978 met with ecumenical patriarch Athenagoras I 1886 to 1972 in Jerusalem The following year the two religious leaders lifted the mutual anathemas between their churches What are the facts about the Titanic as the brainchild of Lord William James Perry and J. 
Bruce Ismay, Titanic was a marriage of British technology and American money. Perry was head of Harland and Wolfe, a firm known for building the sturdiest and best ships in the British Isles. Ismay was chairman of the White Star Line, owned by American financier J. Pierpont Morgans, 1837-1913, International Mercantile Marine. In 1907 Perry and Ismay came up with a plan to compete with the top-notch Cunard liners by surpassing them both in size and luxury. The ship they planned, Titanic, was built in Belfast along with her sister ship. Olympic, which Titanic exceeded in gross tonnage but not in length. Titanic was 882 feet long, 92 feet wide, and weighed 46,328 gross tons. Nine steel decks rose as high as an 11-story building. Registered as a British ship and manned by British officers. Titanic was launched on May 31, 1911. The ship was everything Paris and Ismay had planned. Titanic's size not only allowed more room to accommodate the increasing number of steerage. Cheapest fare, passengers who were immigrating to the United States. But also featured lavish elegance for first and second class travelers. Creature comforts included the first shipboard swimming pool, Turkish bath, gymnasium, and squash court. First-class cabins were nothing short of opulent. Including coal-burning fireplaces in the sitting rooms and full-size, four-poster beds in the bedrooms. Additionally, there was a loading crane and a compartment for automobiles. The ship's hospital even featured a modern operating room. With her steerage full and some of society's most prominent individuals on board. The RMS Titanic left the docks at Southampton, England, on April 10, 1912. New York Harbor was her final destination. On April 14, the ship was traveling in the exceptionally calm and icy waters of the North Atlantic. Near Newfoundland. At 11.40 p.m., Titanic scraped an iceberg, sustaining damage along the starboard, right, side, from the bow to about midship. The Titanic, which immediately began taking on water, sank in two hours and 40 minutes in the early morning hours of April 15. Only 711 of the 2,224 aboard survived. The 1,513 lost included American industrialists and businessmen John Jacob Astor IV, Isidore Strauss, of R. H. Macy's, Benjamin Guggenheim, and Harry Elkins Widener. Survivors mostly women and children who had been traveling as first-class passengers were picked up by the Carpathia, which was 58 miles away when it received Titanic's distress signals. It took three and a half hours for Carpathia to reach the site of the disaster, by which time the Titanic was gone. Was Indira Gandhi related to Mohandas Gandhi? No, the two were not related, except by events. After India achieved independence in 1947, the country's first Prime Minister was Jawaharlal Nehru. 
1889-1964, who had been a follower of Mohandas Gandhi, 1869-1948. The Great Leader of India's Long Struggle for Autonomy from Great Britain During his entire tenure, 1947-64, as leader of India, Nehru was assisted by his only child. Indira, 1917-1984, who in 1942 married a man named Feroz Gandhi of no relation. To Mohandas Gandhi Indira Gandhi took an active role in India's national affairs. After her father died, she went on to become Prime Minister in 1966. However, hers was a troubled tenure. Found guilty of employing illegal election practices. Indira Gandhi was ousted by her political opponents in 1977. Determined to return to power. She was re elected to parliament in 1980 and again served as prime minister until her death in 1984. She was assassinated by two of her own security guards. Sikhs who were motivated by religious reasons. Her son and successor, Rajiv Gandhi, 1944 1991 was also assassinated, in 1991. Who were the big four? Though the Paris Peace Conference, which began in January 1919, was attended by representatives of all the Allied nations. The decisions were made by four heads of government, called the Big Four, President Woodrow Wilson. 1856-1924, of the United States, Prime Minister David Lloyd George, 1863-1945, of Great Britain. Premier Georges Clemenceau, 1841-1929, of France, and Premier Vittorio Orlando, 1860-1952, of Italy. Other representatives formed committees to work out the details of the treaties that were drawn up with each of the countries that had made up World War I Central Powers. The Treaty of Versailles was signed with Germany, the Treaty of St. Germain was signed with Austria, the Treaty of New Italy was made with Bulgaria. The Treaty of Trianon was made with Hungary, and the Treaty of Sevre was signed with the Ottoman Empire. What is a passion play? A passion play is a dramatization of the scenes connected with the passion and crucifixion of Jesus. Christ. The roots of the passion play can be traced to ancient times. Early Egyptians performed plays dedicated to the god Osiris, god of the underworld and judge of the dead. And the Greeks also acted out plays to honor their god Dionysus, the god of fertility, wine, and, later, drama. During the Middle Ages, 500-1350, liturgical, religious ceremonial, dramas were performed. Toward the end of the 10th century, the Western Church began to dramatize parts of the Latin Mass, especially for holidays such as Easter. These plays were performed in Latin by the clergy, inside the church building. Eventually the performances became more secular. 
with laymen acting out the parts on the steps of the church or even in marketplaces. The liturgical dramas developed into so-called miracle plays or mystery plays. As a symbol of gratitude or as a request for a favor. Villagers would stage the life story of the Virgin Mary or of a patron saint. When the plague, also called the Black Death, ravaged Europe, the villagers at Oberammergau, Germany, in the Bavarian Alps, vowed to enact a passion play at regular intervals in the hope that by so doing they would be spared the Black Death. They first performed this folk drama in 1634 and have continued to stage it every ten years. Attracting numerous tourists to the small town in southern Germany.